Well, I'm delighted that we are meeting in my home ground of the Delhi Ridge, where it all began when I was young, before the Second World War. And uh, after 32 years of being a schoolmaster and a headmaster, I went back to my roots and moorings and decided to spend the next 10 years of my life and the life of our nation working towards a radical environmental transformation for the better, not only of the natural resource base and the natural heritage of India, but also the human heritage which I have been seeing as a headmaster and a school teacher deteriorating in matters of ethics and values in spite of all that I've been able to do with my schools and old students who are doing good work. But what we need to do now is to replicate such idealism throughout India and maybe globally. And uh, the genesis of this was on the Delhi Ridge, which is in certain parts still very well protected, though there is some encroachment and a bit of decimation here and there the Delhi administration and the central government with the help of NGOs and I run one of them, the Society for the Conservation of the Delhi Ridge and the Yamuna, uh, have been doing a lot of good work and we in our own way in a low profile have been helping them, particularly in regard to an prevention of encroachment on the Delhi Ridge and the cleaning up of the Yamuna which as you know has been taken up by the present Minister of Environment and the Government of India very seriously. For almost a decade as a schoolmaster at the Dune School, Dehradun, in 1958, I worked with the Wildlife Preservation Society of India, which I had helped to found, as editor of Cheetal, the journal of the society, which is still being published, and became involved as a headmaster for 22 years, Rector St. Paul School, Darjeeling, Air Force School, Subrotha Park, Army Public School, Dhalakwa, and finally managed to decide to set aside the next 10 years of my life in a, an effort to bring together all my old students and friends and colleagues and the whole country together into a radical environmental and human transformation of values because we have been losing out over the last 40 years, not only in terms of forest and natural heritage, but also in terms of the absolutely unique human values of India. Whether it is the tribals in Chand Chandrapur and Orissa, or the Gonds and the Peels in Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh, or the Kons in Andhra Pradesh, or the tribes and indigenous peoples in Assam or anywhere else in India. There has been a change because of exploitation by the process of development and by the people who were generally the elite, affluent people who took full advantage of this process of development. We must now stabilize this process of development to reconcile it with environmental conservation and human values as well as expedite the process of economic and human resource development and industrialization. And uh, that is, well, that was the genesis. That was the genesis of my oath in 1989-90, which began with the conceptualization and the starting of this journal of sustainable development, the International Quarterly Journal of Sustainable Development, as a forum of global environmental conservation and development. We have published three issues now. One was for the Special Earth Summit issue of the United Nations Conference on Environment and Development in Rio de Janeiro, where I was able to present it to over a thousand heads of state, government, ministers of environment, heads of delegations and environmentalists. And for the first time from the third world developing countries of the South, we have a journal which matches the international caliber of nearly 50 such journals from Europe and America and Japan. And um, this is what I have used as a starting point. But what we are doing also is 
bringing together NGOs, non-governmental organizations and stimulating and cooperating with government departments and officials amongst whom there is a lot of idealism which is not often appreciated. Whether it is in the field of educational policies, particularly at school level or in the higher education policies or in economic and human resource development, environmental controls and conservation, I think we have a unique statutory base where all the laws are in position, the rule making powers have been delegated though we are not fully utilizing them and it is for us, the citizens of India, the voluntary agencies, the non-governmental organizations and non-governmental individuals who are fired with a spirit of enthusiasm for the future to make sure by that, that by the end of the century we are in a position to reclaim the lost ground in terms of human values and in terms of the conservation and appropriate sustainable development of our subcontinental nation all the way from the Himalayas down to the seas and this is what I am currently presently engaged upon as a personal campaign in which I find all my many of my old students and friends are joining it is almost like a watershed movement in India which will finally end up by cleansing even the body politic because I have great faith and optimism in the ability of Indians generally, whether they are very poor, deprived and underprivileged or the elite affluent groups who have cornered most of the advantages of development to reconcile these problems, to reconcile these disparities through a process of give and take, a process of a little sacrifice and a renunciation on the part of the elite and the affluent and dedicated cooperative work by those who do not have access to the levers of decision making and power. This quarterly International Journal of Sustainable Development from New Delhi launched in October 1991. What I find very satisfying about the work we have been able to do with a lot of sacrifice and a lot of hassles and struggles, both financial and editorial, about the quarterly International Journal of Sustainable Development from New Delhi, which was launched in October 1991, is that we have an editorial board and an international editorial council which is genuinely and authentically international. For example, we have Dr. Margarita de Botero of the Green University from Colombia, we have um, Jacques Bunicot from Senegal, and we have Kanakmani Dixit from Nepal, and Professor Johan Galtung, the Nobel laureate from Norway, Dr. Gennady Golubev from the USSR, as it was. and. Uh, Professor Hu Zenu from China and Jonathan King and Her Excellency Pera Wells from Australia, Michai Viravaidya from Thailand and Dr. Jonas Sauk from the USA, Dr. Swaminathan from India and so on. Even the contributors to the various issues of the journal have been people like Mustafa Tolba and Maurice Strong and Robert Goodland and Herman Daly who used to be totally um, in favor of the steady state economics have I think uh, incorporated into their thinking things like sustainable development in the World Bank which is very useful for India and the third world developing countries of the south and, and we have people like Thomas Titenberg who is a, a pioneer in the economic incentives and the quest for sustainable development and uh, Jeffrey McNeely, the Chief Conservation Officer of the International Union for the Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources in Switzerland. 
and Bindu Lohani from the Asian Development Bank, Ashish Kothari Shekhar Singh and Kulan Amin from India, and uh, Johan Galtung has written for us. So we have the Anil Agawal and Sunita Narayan team on global warming, and um, Jyoti and Kirit Parikh on the role of unsustainable consumption patterns and population in global environmental stress. And uh, Summer Singh from our own ministry on people's participation in forest management, Michai Veera Vedya in the Thai Business Initiative in Rural Development, sharing gains while improving productivity. Now, this is the kind of uh, contributor we have been able to attract. And in all the issues, you find people like um, Dr. Venkateshwaralu on sustainable development in agriculture, and Dr. T. N. Koshu and the director of the Zoological Survey of India and the Chandi Prashad Bhatt from the Dasholi Gram Swarajya Mandal. Even a message from our present Prime Minister and Dr. Gain Mehrotra on sustainable agriculture versus the environment in dealing with pests. All these articles which we see here, like the one from the British and Minister of Environment, Michael Heseltine, on environmental integration in government. And again, we have um, the new Minister of Environment of Britain writing for this journal, as have uh, people like uh, um, James Grant, who was the executive director of UNICEF. We only publish original articles, apart from reviews of books and conferences and reports in the columns for news and events and views and communications like we had one from Mr. J.R.D. Tata on population. So this journal has actually caught on, especially after I visited Rio as a member of the Indian delegation and was able to meet a very large number of heads of government and state and ministers of environment and heads of delegations and environmentalists and scientists at the UNCED. I'm afraid I didn't have much time to spend at the global forum because that was more of a carnival spirit. But we did have interaction with the serious NGOs around the world. And uh, that interaction is the bread and butter of this journal because the cir circulation is now beginning to pick up. The people are writing from all over the world asking for subscriptions to this journal and copies of the journal. And we will have to increase our print run, though at the moment we still continue to have financial deficits. I don't think there is any other journal in the third world which can match the caliber of these European and American journals, which are very good, but they're then very highly funded. Whereas ours is uh, really on a shoestring budget, and we get support not from one, but 20 different sources on a very, very token and modest scale. And I think that is the way we should continue with this journal, because it should never become anything more than an academic, semi-popular international journal on sustainable development.